So here we're going to look at how haloalkanes can react via substitution reaction. So during these examples, we're going to look at chloroalkanes in particular. However, uh, these, these ideas and these reactions can be extended to any haloalkane. So uh, alkanes containing uh, bromine or iodine molecules and so on. So here we've got a carbon bonded to three other, three other atoms and one chlorine atom. Now, we know that this bond, we know that covalent bonds are in fact pairs of electrons that are being shared. So we can change this and we can redraw it as two electrons being shared. Now, due to the varying electronegativity, but the difference in electronegativity of, between carbon and chlorine atoms, uh, these electrons aren't going to be exactly between the two atoms. Chlorine is much more electronegative than carbon, and so chlorine attracts electrons much more than carbon. What that means is that these two electrons are actually are actually going to be much closer to the chlorine atom than they are to the carbon atom. So the electron, the pair of electrons forming this bond, are staying are hanging around really close to this chlorine atom and not very close to the carbon atom. Now, what that means is that this uh, this 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 sort of structure here is very vulnerable uh, to to attack or to a reaction. In fact, it's very vulnerable. It's so vulnerable that it can be this chlorine atom and the pair of electrons can in fact be removed by any negative ion. So we've got a negative ion here with an electron pair coming out. So obviously, because it's a neg negative electron, one of these electrons is uh, sort of an extra. Now what can happen is this negative ion can move in there and kick this chlorine and the, the pair of electrons out. And what we end up with is this structure, this arrangement here. And then we obviously have chlorine ion kicked off out here because chlorine has gained an extra electron. It's kept, so one of one of these electrons is from carbon, one of the electrons is from chlorine. Now chlorine, the chlorine atom has kept the, uh, the extra electron that it got from carbon when it got kicked out. However, the extra electron carried by this ion has replaced that, uh, that electron that carbon has lost. So everything works out, except chlorine ends up with an extra electron. That's why we have a chloride ion over here. And so what we end up with, this chlorine uh, atom bonded to the carbon atom is replaced or is substituted by a negative ion. And so uh, what often happens here, this is often how we produce uh, alkanol, alkanols. So if we have, for example, uh, if we have chloro, chloroethane, so I'm not going to draw in all the hydrogens here, but we know that all these bonds coming out of the carbons are in fact bonded to hydrogens. So what we can get is we can have a uh, chloroethane molecule, we can have maybe a hydroxide ion, and from there we can end up with So I've drawn in the hydrogens again on this side and a hydroxyl group here. And obviously we're left, with the, we've then created a straight chloride ion. So that's one way of producing uh, ethanol from uh, chloroethane. Now, not only can this, can this bond be attacked by a negative ion or an anion, the other option is that if we have a polar molecule, so say we've just got a generic molecule here, this molecule may have a slightly negative end or a delta minus, meaning a small negative charge at this end and a delta positive charge at this end. So this molecule may be polar. And what can happen is that the negative end of this polar molecule can in fact kick the chlorine out much the same way as the negative ion did. And so one example of this is, again, the production of ethanol. However, what we're looking at in this situation, the way that this can happen is if we have a water molecule. So again, uh, the, the oxygen is more electronegative than the hydrogen atoms, and thus the, uh, the electrons in these bonds are slightly more up here towards the oxygen atom. And so that means that this end has a delta minus. Uh, it, it is sort of the negative pole of this polar molecule. So that means that this negative end can attack this, this carbon-chlorine bond here. And what we end up with 
is that uh, this, this negative end forms a hydroxyl group. A hydroxyl group from this, this water molecule joins onto the carbon, and obviously one of the hydrogens from the water molecule is left over. And that hydrogen molecule, that hydrogen atom, sorry, bonds with the chlorine that has been kicked out. So we end up with a hydrochloric acid molecule. So that is another way we can produce ethanol from chloroethane by reacting it with water, because water is a polar molecule. So another another very important uh, facet of this, uh, another impo very important example of how polar molecules can kick can kick out the chlorine atom is if we look at an ammonia molecule. So I've got an ammonia molecule here and again nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen so the, the electrons are much closer to nitrogen than they are to hydrogen. So we have a delta minus up here. Now again this, this therefore this, this negatively charged end of the ammonia molecule can attack the chlorine carbon bond and kick the chlorine off and what we then end up with is an amine. So this is how we produce alkanols and how we can produce amines. And so again, we've got an NH2 group that's bonded to the carbon. We've got an, a leftover hydrogen from the ammonia and that hydrogen forms hydrochloric acid with the chlorine atom. So they're, they're the two different ways substitution reactions can occur. Uh, and a halogen atom that's bonded to a carbon in a haloalkane can be kicked off by either a, a negatively charged ion or can be kicked off by the negative end of a polar molecule. So we'll look at a couple of examples now. So we're just going to write a few equations using structural formulae. So the first one that we're going to look at is we've got two chloropropane. So we've got this set up here. We've got chlorine on the middle carbon and then the rest of the bonds are bonds with hydrogen. And so what we're going to do, we're going to get this, this chloropropane, this 2-chloropropane molecule, and we're going to produce propantool. So propantool looks, we know, like this. So again, there are two ways that this can occur. Firstly, we're going to fill in the gaps. So firstly, we, we've got, we can add a hydroxide ion and therefore what we have on this side is we've replaced the chlorine atom with a hydroxide ion and so we have a chloride ion left over. The alternative is for us to add a water molecule. Again the negative end, this, this oxygen is going to kick the chlorine off and exactly the same way as it was with uh, as we had with chloroethane, we're going to end up with a hydrochloric acid molecule. So that's pretty straightforward. We've just extended it to a slightly different molecule. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to write a chemical equation. We're just going to write a regular chemical equation from scratch for how we can produce. So we're going to take, we're going to get butantuamine. from two iodobutane. So we're starting off with two iodobutane. So we're going to write a chemical equation for this reaction. We've started off with two iodobutane. So butane is going to have a CH3 group, and then the, 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 the iodine uh, atom is on the second carbon. So we're going to have CHI, then another CH2 group, then our final CH3 group. So that's 2 iodobutane. And what we want to do, we want to produce butane to amine. And so obviously we're going to be adding an ammonia molecule to kick off this iodine atom from our uh, haloalkane. So we're going to add an ammonia molecule. And so what's going to happen is this, this iodine is going to get kicked off and replaced by the nitrogen and two of the hydrogens. So this, this amine group is going to kick the iodine off. So we're going to get CH3. And then we've got an amine group. And then we've got the rest of the structure remains the same. 
And so obviously we kicked a hydrogen out, and that hydrogen will bond with the uh, the the iodine uh, this uh, this iodine atom and create this molecule here. So that is our reaction uh, that's going to occur if we want to produce butane tilamine from two iodo butane. Obviously we could we could represent this using structures. So we've got an iodine there, hydrogens everywhere else. And we're ending up with an amine group here instead. And obviously, this this uh, this hydrogen, this ammonia molecule is d what's what's causing that to happen. And so the negative, the negatively charged end or the nitrogen end is going to squeeze in here and kick the iodine off. Uh, off of the uh, the main carbon chain, and then we're going to have left over this, uh, this molecule here. So that's how substitution reactions occur in haloalkanes. And so if we combine that with substitution reactions of alkanes, we can see a, a good process, a good two-step process for producing things like amines and alkanols from alkanes. So we can replace a hydrogen with a halogen. So we can take, if, if, if we started with a hydrogen here, we can replace the hydrogen with a chlorine, as we've got here now. And then from there, we can replace the chlorine with either an amine group or an, an A hydroxyl group. And so that's how we can produce both amines and uh, alkanols from haloalkanes.